Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, in this video, we're going to give you the essential documents needed to board your very first carnival cruise. Listen, we want you to get on your carnival cruise without any issues, without getting turned away, because guess what? People do get turned away yeah, for not do. having the proper documents needed to board a carnival cruise ship. Who's this video for? It's for you U.S. citizens. It's for anyone traveling with minors. It's for people that are traveling with minors that are not their own family members. We're going to break down the documents needed to board. You ready to get into it? Let's, let's go. go. So let's talk about closed loop sailings. What is a closed loop sailing? It's simply a sailing that leaves from a U.S. port and comes back to that same U.S. port. It's called a closed loop sailing. Yep. With a closed loop sailing, you do have the flexibility to travel with a valid birth certificate. When I say valid, we don't want your baptismal record. <laughs> we don't want the vanity one from the hospital that got your mama thumbprint, your daddy thumbprint, or it could be empty <laughs> if, if you just didn't know it was a wild night, and your feet print on it when you were first came out the womb. That is not a valid birth certificate. Whenever in question, just get one printed from Vital Statistics. You know that it's the most up to date. Yep. It's the valid one. You do not have any issues. Can it be a copy? Absolutely. It does not have to be the original, but it has to be legible and it has to have all of the edges so that they know that it is not an altered birth certificate. Along with the birth certificate, you're going to need a state issued ID. Yes, indeed. I know you may read that you don't need it. You don't need it. Well, go on carnival.com. They're going to tell you that you need it. So even if they don't look for it at check-in, it's best to have it and not need it than to need it and, and don't not have. have it. So the next thing that you can travel with is a passport book and a passport card. When you have those things, those are king and queen, actually. <laughs> um, king is the book. Queen is going to be that passport card. We push for everybody, especially if you know you're going to be a frequent traveler, just go ahead and get the passport it's going to make your life so much easier, especially on disembarkation day. If you are going to be getting on a sailing that leaves from out of Puerto Rico, please make sure that you stay up to date. And what I mean by that is go on carnival.com, make sure that you do not need a passport for the itinerary that you are leaving from, that you are going to from Puerto Rico. What I mean by that is there are some itineraries that only initiate from the Puerto Rican port area that do require the people to have a passport to go to. But make sure that you're keeping abreast to that information because sometimes it just flips, changes, and what have you. So I just wanted to put that plug out there. Keep Puerto Rico in your mind. If there's a sailing leader from Puerto Rico yep. anytime in the future, make sure that you know whether or not you need a passport or not. So we talked about closed loop sailings. Let's talk about international voyages, and that speaks for itself. It's an international voyage that initiates from an international territory country. You're going to need a passport. Yep. There's no way around it. You're going to need a passport book. Not even a card is going to do it in this instance. And then you have to make sure that whenever you are traveling and you rely on your passport to be your document of entry, that it is valid for six months. From the yes. last day mm -hmm. of your travels on that trip. For instance, if you're going on a trip from December the 1st to December the 7th, from December the 7th counts forward six months. That passport has to be valid for at least six months after December the 7th. Yeah. If it is not, you're going to be denied boarding. Right off we the bat. We don't want that. We don't you want could that. be five <laughs> months and 29 days clear on your um, passport and you will be denied. Also, when traveling and you have a resident card, you are okay to travel from a U.S. port as well. All right, the next thing is for children that are 16 and older. If you are 16 and older, you are required to have a unexpired government issue ID. Mm -hmm. Of course, like the queen said earlier, if you're under 15, 15 and under, you, you do not anything. need a government issued ID. 
Now, these are the IDs that are accepted and 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 they have to have your picture on it. Mm -hmm. So make sure the picture on so you can have your uh, uh, driver's permit. You can have your school ID. You can have your learner's um, permit. You can have your government or military ID. You can have like your TSA pre-check or your global entry, something to that nature. But again, make sure that your picture ID is on that. Yep. And that's for 16 to 18 year olds. Yes. All right. The next thing that we want to talk about is traveling with minors. We kind of hit on all of the things that's required to travel with minors. But let's talk about traveling with minors that are not your own. Yeah, man. We get that all the time. We get that yeah, all, all the, the time. time. So yeah. what's going to happen if you're traveling with minors that are not your own? You're going to need a notarized letter giving you authorization to take said child onto the cruise with you. That notarized letter also needs to include that you are able to say yay or nay to medical treatment, yay or nay to them doing onboard activities on the cruise. And then of course, yay or nay, that they are permitted to travel with you from said port of call to said port of call, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, you just can't get on board with someone else's child without their parent, legal guardian, or someone being notarizing that authorization to do so. Right. Another question that we get, what if there's only one parent in the picture? If there's only one parent in the picture and that is the primary parent, only the primary parent needs to be able to give that permission. If both parents are co-guardians, co-parenting, both need to sign off on it. There is no exceptions to that. So again, the documents that are needed for everyone else is the same for children. They're going to need to have at least a passport, passport book or birth certificate. Yep. If they're under 15, they don't need any additional IDs to go along with their birth certificate. But if they're 16 to 18 plus, then of course you're going to need a state issued government issued ID that has their picture on it. As my husband stated, he listed what those are. The next essential document that you definitely don't want to forget these uh, because we want you to get on the cruise. So first will be your boarding pass. Of mm -hmm. course, you want to have your boarding pass. You also want to make sure that you have your luggage tag. So that way, yes. when you with the luggage tags, you want to make sure that you go and get luggage tax holders for those. Yes. Because the last thing we want to happen to you is your luggage go up underneath the ship and it falls off because you decided to staple it or tape it or tape it to your suitcase. So we actually have some luggage tags that we recommend, luggage tax holders mm -hmm. that we recommend recommend in our cruise essential store, which is linked down in the description. The next thing that you want to make sure that you have your booking confirmations for anything that you have purchased. Let me tell you, this is very important it because uh, and when I say that. Uh, I mean, like if you book specialty dining, mm -hmm. um, if you've um, booked excursions, anything Spa that you treatment, anything you've done in advance, bring those receipts with you because we've had an instance where we've paid for specialty dining and, and we get on the ship and they, and they don't have no record of our purchase. But thank God we had our booking confirmation be like, here you go, player. Here's the receipt right here. We got right here. We paid for this, mate. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you bring them. Also, you want to keep in mind that if your name is different, your last name is different on your uh, boarding pass than it is on your driver's license birth or certificate. birth certificate. Anything you want to make sure you bring supporting documents. The state that my last name is different because I just got married, divorced, oh, divorced, so, legal name change, yeah, sex so, change, exactly. So we want to make sure that you get on smooth sailing. So that's what you need to make happen before you come to the cruise port. All right, the last thing that we're going to talk about is a controversial one, and I don't yeah, understand why it's man. controversial. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Travel insurance, insurance. yeah. <laughs> It's by law in most states that you can't even get in your car without having some type of auto insurance right. on said vehicle, whether it's full coverage or liability. I don't know why people get on a foreign vessel to them. Don't know what they're walking into. They're worried about being seasick, not being able to stand up straight, hitting a wave or a whale. But the last thing on your mind is insurance to protect you from hitting a whale or being seasick. Or protecting the money you're paying for the cruise. Hello. 
I know it sounds like a commercial for pennies on a dollar. <laughs> you can protect your investment <sighs> by going ahead and getting travel insurance. Now, is travel insurance foolproof insurance for you being able to cancel whenever you want to? Absolutely not. That's a whole different subject for a whole different day. But if you are looking to go on this cruise and you want to protect yourself, there are instances that happen that are way beyond our control. Right. There are instances where there could be a delay where you aren't able to get there. There could be something that interrupts your travels. For instance, in Baltimore, the whole entire bridge was knocked down. Yeah. That was, an, um, that was crazy. That was crazy. And yeah. guess what happened? That's considered a trip interruption. For right. anything that these people are out of when it comes to that trip, they should put it right through their travel mm, insurance, insurance right. for a reimbursement of any losses that they may have because things like that happen. Not your control. Right. What if you fall down? Like we're on the water. There's pools. There's hot tubs. Somebody may get out and you might walk right behind their footsteps and slip on the deck. Yeah. If you have to get airlifted off of that... um off of that ship, depending on how far you are away from home base, Ooh. it can go from $30,000, $50,000 to $100,000 to be able to get them to get that helicopter out to meet you and take you back to home base. Do you have that? So for pennies on a dollar, <laughs> <laughs> just go ahead and think about protecting your investment and making sure that you are covered the best way possible. Yeah, and so make sure that if you are buying independent travel insurance, make sure that you bring that policy with you. Yes. But you don't need to bring the policy with you for Carnival. Because they have it. You got it. They got it. You pay for it with them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man. Travel insurance, we get it all the time. We, we don't take not near a trip without mm -mm. it. Not one. Yeah. <laughs> but like my husband said, if you do an independent policy outside of Carnival, that is okay as well. Just yeah. make sure that you know what it covers. And if it's covering everything that you wanted to cover, and if it doesn't, look elsewhere. You are always able to buy a third-party insurance outside of the cruise line. Don't, don't get it twisted. You can do that. Right. Also, this information is over on our blog, on our website, which mm -hmm. will be linked down in the description where we talk about documents that you need to board your first Carnival Cruise. Also, if you have enjoyed this video, mm -hmm. you want to check out this video next where we talked about Carnival's Wi-Fi packages mm -hmm. from the pricing, what they cover, is it worth it? Him and the devices that cover. If you oh, are in need it. of that information, check that out next. And we will see you in the next video. Peace. Peace. Peace.